go file new we're going to select my low res from my bake and we don't have any images to bake because we're going to go ahead and do that in painter let's go ahead uh, direct is fine hit ok there's our game res we're going to go to our texture settings bake textures load up our high res here now we don't have to do anything fancy now if we had uh, go to my YouTube channel if you want to see the process of actually go to my YouTube playlist go to the reptile creature series and in here and that playlist you will see multi baking in painter from ZBrush so it'll show you how to bake or export multiple objects using FBX in ZBrush to name them and then name them again so that the painter low reses can match the painter high reses then you can do baking individual assets without getting errors. Uh, since this is only one asset, I'm just going to go ahead and just bake it straight up. 2048, all the defaults are probably fine. We'll take a quick look. You know, we'll up that dilation, dilation just a bit. All right, everything looks good. If you go here to your textures, you're going to see all the textures that are baked. If you search by initial, that'll go ahead and show you. Here's the ambient occlusion it baked. Here's the material ID, the normal map, and all that stuff's already plugged in right where I want it. So let's go ahead and texture this guy up. Uh, first place we can start is just with here under the materials. I'm going to just do a steel search. We got a steel rusty. I'm going to drag that in here. We don't need that layer. So now I've got like a steel rusty. Looks pretty good. If we want to chew up these edges just a little bit, let's go ahead and do a fill layer. And we'll do steel rough. And I'm going to do, let's go ahead and name it. And I'm going to right click, add a black mask, right click, add a generator, go over to our generators. And we do have MG Middle Edgeware still over here. We can go to our smart masks and drag some of those in if we want, but Middle Edgeware work fine. So now we got Steel Rough showing through a little bit. So let's go ahead and crank these levels down a bit. Now you're probably being like, well, why does he have all of this? metalware everywhere. Why don't you assign it to a certain place? Well, this is going to be my base layer and everything else is going to be stacked on top of this. So if this is fine. I'm going to go to my steel properties here and we'll darken up that color just a bit. All right. Okay. So on top of here, let's start with wood, I suppose. You can call this wood, another fill layer, and we'll go look for wood over here. American, that'll work. So now you're going to see, because I've got pretty crappy UVs, because I just did an auto UV here, i got some bad seams, but not to fear. We can do triplanar projection, and that'll kind of even out some of that noise for me. And as I pass the light over here, uh, the height might be a little bit much, so I'm going to go to my height menu here. I'm going to crank that down just a tad, just kind of dumb that height down a bit. And let's go make this a little bit darker. Perfect. So now this wood does go on two places. It goes on here on the stock and then up here on this little grippy thing here. So let's go ahead and right click, add mask color selection, and we'll go ahead and pick this one. And we'll go ahead and pick this one. So now it's isolated to those two spots. Let's do a light metal here. I'm going to do another fill layer. We'll go ahead and call it light metal. Mental, whatever. Let's do another steel. We'll do another steel rough. And we'll keep it light. And I'm going to do massive color selection, pick color here. And I'm going to duplicate this off. And we'll call this screw. And I don't want the screws to be that light. So I'm going to go in here, dumb down that color just a bit. Add massive color selection, which will override the original. And then I'm just going to tap these screws here. And you know what? Maybe even these little things down here. Oh, we need rubber back here. That shouldn't be metal. So we'll just go ahead and do... And of course, I can just drag these out. I don't know why I keep renaming these things. You can just drag them out from here. No rubber in there. We got, oh, we got some rubber in here. Let's do rubber dry. I'm going to drag out a smart material. And I'll move rubber dry up here. Add mass color selection. We'll pick this one. And you know what? Let's see what we got going on in rubber dry. Rubber base. It's filled with the cloud layer. I'm going to go ahead and make it not quite so dry if I can. And I'll turn that rubber worn color off. So now it's a little bit too shiny. Something like that. Good enough. So let's see if I missed anything major here. 
Not really. So let's do a little bit of detail work on here. I'm going to make a new fill layer. We'll call this oil. And oil, I just want to do some roughness here. So I'm going to make it really shiny. Add a black mask. And in this mask, I'm just going to use my regular old brush here. I'm going to drop my flow down. And wherever... Oh, I need to reset my Wacom settings. Hold on. I might as well record this too. So I don't want double click back here. I want middle click. Thank you. So now I can pan around in here. So wherever there's going to be like stuff that needs to be oiled, like screws and stuff, I can go ahead and drop some oil right on there. I'm going to oil this up. Put some oil around here. And this wood, we can go ahead and kind of chew or dirty this wood up as well. So what I'm going to do is go grab this wood. I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to drop this wood in it. And instead of doing a color selection down here for the wood, let's go ahead and remove mask. I'm going to right click this folder and do mask with color selection. So now that everything goes in, that goes in this folder will be masked out in the wood area. So now I can go ahead and do another fill. We'll call this wood oil. And we'll go ahead and give it, um, you know what, let's hide it temporarily. And we'll just do a color picker to grab a dark brown, turn it back on, add a black mask. Let's grab our, or one of the dirt brushes here. We'll drop that flow down quite a bit. And you can go ahead and add some kind of woodware in the wood area, wherever that might end up. Oops, I need to add another color selection here. That one. And we'll do one more thing maybe. Let's do a roughness breakup and again it's just going to be roughness all over the entire object and go down here to procedurals and we'll go look at our grunge maps grunge 10 looks pretty cool we'll drop that on there I was going to break up that surface just a bit and I'm going to take this roughness and drop that down so it just kind of does a little hint of breakup and we can tile it maybe a little bit less That'll work. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can go ahead and, you know, go here in here and do text with the height. Um, I don't feel like typing any text out, but what I can do is, I know I downloaded some alphas, stencils from the Pixelogic website. So let's do 853 and 854, and I'm just going to drag these right into my alphas tab. I'll just import them for current session only. And I can narrow it down by alpha. So now I've got this alpha here. I'm going to do another fill layer. And this one will just be, we'll call it engraving. And it's only going to be height information. So we've got the height, everything but height turned off. And we'll go ahead and do a black mask. And we'll go ahead and make that height down a little bit. So on the engraving here, we're just going to use a regular old brush. We'll do default hard and then the alpha shape we're going to go ahead and bring in this thing so now we can go on here and stamp in our uh, detail if we'd like we can go to this side we can replace this alpha with this one and go through here stamp this on now if it's like oh we stamped it in too hard no big deal go back here change your height you can even bump it out if you want to it's up to you so that's why i like thing doing things a little bit more non-destructively in painter later on for super detail stuff like this so i don't have to go back to my sculpt originally so let's say that looks pretty sweet i'm digging this so what i'm going to do is go to display settings activate we'll turn on anti-aliasing we'll go to viewer settings turn on shadows we'll do high intensive computation We'll go to high, and I'm going to go ahead and kill these menus here. Kind of frame this up here and get a really nice render in Painter. Or you would, alternatively, what you could do is do um, an eye ray render. And we'll open up Dome. And we'll just turn on clear color so I don't have to see that background there. So now we're doing an eye ray render. We can still use Shift and right click to kind of pass that light around. This gives us a little bit more realism in here. Let that resolve a bit. And of course you can go up here. You can change your min samples and your max samples to see how long it's going to take to render. It'll just continue to render nicer and nicer as it goes. You can save your render. You can share it on ArtStation. You can go over here and do change your environment settings. You can go down here. We've got our post effects enabled. So we can go ahead and like say do a color correction and maybe 
make it a little more contrast if you want to. We can go and vignette it a bit. We can do all sorts of cool things, but you know, and, and you know, you saw how fast it was to kind of just concept this thing out, see if it looks right, throw it into iRay or grab a painter view, painter render. Looks fine, you get an idea of what the weapon is, and it went really, really super fast. So, you know, no reason to go all in, you know, hours and hours and hours on a project doing the perfect uh, thing just to get it in and realize, you know, oh, we don't actually want that one, or that wasn't as cool as I thought, or it's not going to work.